الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد one of the incredibly important اصول or foundations from the religion of Islam is the position of the leader in Islam and leadership and the leader of the Muslims or leaders of the Muslims have a great responsibility and they have a great place in Islam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them that status subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in countless ahadith that you can find in Sahih Muslim in the chapter entitled chapter uh, Kitab al-Imara which illustrates for us the important position of the leader and respecting and being obedient to the Muslim leader except in disobedience to Allah that the Muslim is ordered to hear and obey the Muslim leadership except in disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from that there are many details that we will try to briefly discuss and mention some of those uh, some of those texts and some of the evidences regarding this important principle in addition to that we'll also take a look at the issue of ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed as many of the people of takfir and many of the khawarij and the neo khawarij build their religion based upon this those people who claim and yell from the rooftops and behind the manabir or from behind the, the mimbars in the masajid of the Muslims about Tawheed al hakamiya and other calls and other political calls and other uh, and, and making takfir of the rulership of the Muslims and of one another and those people who disagree that none of these methodologies are new these are not new methodologies so that's very important for us to understand that first and foremost that these are not new methodologies these started with the original group that went against the Imam of the Muslims and killed Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu and fought and rebelled against Ali ibn Abi Talib and made takfir of him radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een and many of the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam so this is not a new creed but let's first establish this asal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem ya ayu aladheena amanu أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ رُسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us. But who does He order? He orders the believers. So if you're not from Ahli Iman, then of course this khatab is not directed towards you. This speech from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this order is directed to the believers. So if you are a believer, then you should take heed to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, Ya ayu aladheena amanu, O you who believe, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ رُسُولُ Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ And the leader from amongst you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us uh, uh, what we need as He created us for the purpose of worshiping Him. And He gr gave us those are our foundation for our community that we follow the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we're obedient to him which is and his commands are found in the Quran the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we obey the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how do we do that by following his sunnah in his life by listening and hearing and obeying his commands and it, after his death alayhi salatu wa salam it's by following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us the third maratib or the third aspect. He said, rusul wa amri minkum. And those leaders are those, uh, those who are in authority over you. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us with what? Obedience to the leader. So first that's a command from Allah. It's not a command from the Salafis. It's not a command from Ahl Athar. It's not a command from Ahl Hadith. It's not a command from uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. But it's a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said in countless hadith, Asami'u ta'ala marriya al-Muslim fi ma'uhibu wa qariya, ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyatin fi idha umira bi ma'asiyatin, fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said, as is mentioned, go to Kitab al-Imara in Sahih Muslim, he said, uh, hear and obey in the leader the Muslim ruler, and that which you love and that which you hate, as long as he doesn't command you to do ma'asiyatillah, to do disobedience to Allah. And if, you, and if he orders you to disobedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and obeying. Meaning there's no hearing and obeying, go back to the tafsir of the salaf, there's no hearing and obeying uh, in those aspects that the leader has called you to misguidance. Not meaning it doesn't nafi a ta'a mutlaqan. No, it doesn't negate all of obedience to the leaders, meaning that the leader made a mistake in this rulership or told us to do something haram, we, so now we no longer obey him. No. A'udhu billah min dhalika. That is the minhaj and methodology of Ahl takfir al khwarij. And this is not the time to go into that. And I challenge those who are on that to go back to the books of the Salaf. That's the only way for your success, bi'idnillah ta'ala. Let's hear what some of the uh, scholars have mentioned. And in particular, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, who I, I believe all of us have at least respect for. Qala Shaykh al-Islam, rahimahullah ta'ala, wa yarona iqamat al-hajj wal-jihad wal-jam' wal-iyad mal umara'i abrarin kanu o fajirin. Imam Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, uh, and they see, he was talking about Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the, the creed, the aqidah, the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, that they see that establishing uh, the Hajj, the pilgrimage, and jihad, fi sabilillah, and the Jumu'ah prayer, and the Eids, the two Eids, Eid al Adha wa Eid al uh, Fitr, and uh, establishing this behind the Muslim leader, uh, the, the righteous from amongst them, and the wicked from amongst them. And Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam, he naqla ijma'a fi hadha. Dhakara min naqla ijma'i min ahl al-ilmi o nas'i ala mas'alati mimma sabaqa Shaykh al-Islam naqla ijma'a Ahl Sunnati was Salaf al Ummah, ala hadhi mas'ala kathiratun min Ahl al Ilm. So many of the scholars from Ahl al Ilm, the scholars from the Salaf up until the later generations, uh, declared that this was ijma. And ijma meaning that there's a consensus. And what is consensus in Islam? As the, the ulama of usul, in usul of fiqh, they mention that dalil or evidence in uh, Islam is based on four. Awalin, the first thing is Kitabillah. Thumma Sunnatu Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's the asal, that's the foundation of our religion. Is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa madha wa ijma. Meaning the ijma the salaf. This is what is maqsood by Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, as the ulama point out, is that when Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned ijma, consensus, he's referring to the salaf of this ummah, salaf al salih, and this is what we believe in. This is what Ahl Sunnah, we follow this. So if you have another creed, you want to follow Abu Qatari, you want to follow Abu Hamza Misri, you want to follow Faisal Jamaiki, you want to follow uh, the, uh, the, what's his name, Abu Muhammad uh, Maqdisi, or any other takfiri you want, you choose to follow, or Dhul uh, Khuaysara, the, the, the asl of the Khawarij, or any other person you choose to follow, your Imam has his methodology, in Ahl Sunnah we have our methodology from the Imams of Ahl Sunnah, from the Salaf al-Saleh, radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in, beginning with the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa tab'in, wa tab'a tab'in, and those who follow them, bi ihsan ila yawm al-deen, qala Imam Ismail, Ismail, Al-Mazani, rahimahullah ta'ala, qal, wala yatrakh hudur al-salat al-jumu'ah, wa salataha ma birri, ma birri, hadihi al-umma wa fajiraha lazim, wal-jihad ma kulli imam adlin o ja'ilin wal-hajj. 
So he, he mentioned, and then he, وَهَذِهِ مَقَالَاتِ وَأَفْعَالِ أَجْتَمَعَ عَلَيْهَا الْمَاضِيُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنْ أَئِمَّةِ الْهُدَى So Imam Al-Ismail, Imam Ismail Al-Mazni, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Sahib al-Shara Sunnah, he said that, and do not, uh, and do not, uh, make yourself absent from the 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 Jumu'ah prayer, or from from praying it with the righteous leader uh, from this ummah, or the wicked leader from this ummah. He said it's an obligation, and jihad with them, with with every imam, with whether he, regardless of whether he's just or he's a oppressive, a oppressive sinner, and Hajj, and he said, and these statements are from the actions, or are from the statements and actions that the there is consensus from those people who came before us from amongst the leaders of guidance. I mean, A'imma Tuhuda. Of course, who are the beginning leaders of the Ummah? The A'imma Tuhuda. Beginning with Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Then the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And the Tabi'een. And those Itba'a Tabi'een. So those are the Imams of Huda. So he said that there is naqla ijma. He said that there's a consensus of not rebelling against the ruler, praying behind him, even if he's a wicked sinner, praying juma with him and jihad with him. Qali Imam Abu Bakr Ismaili, rahimahullah ta'ala, madhab ahl al-hadithi ahl al-sunnati wal-jama'a, wa yaroon al-salat al-jumwa wa ghayriha, khalf kullu imamin muslimin, barrin, kan, o fajirin. So Imam Abu Bakr al-Ismaili, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, Ittiqad A'immat al-Hadith, another one of our Salaf al-Saleh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'een, he said that the madhab, or the methodology, or the way, or path of Ahla Hadith, the people of Hadith, Ahla Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is that they see praying the Jumu'ah, and other than it, behind every Imam Muslim, righteous or whether he be wicked. So he said this is the madhab. That means it's a methodology. When you say something is a madhab or it is the minhaj, you're referring to something that is mutakarrar, uh, meaning that it has, uh, it's not something that is just a one-time shot. One imam said it. That means it is consistent with the principles and that means it is established as a, a methodology. A methodology is different than something that someone does one time or one imam has an opinion. Imam Shafi said this, Imam Ahmed said this, Imam Abu Hanifa said this. No, but rather these are things that Imam, uh, 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 imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam uh, Ahmed, and the Imam uh, Huda that they had consensus on. Don't rebel against the ruler, even if he's a wicked fajr. Waqal, waqal Imam Ibn Batta al Akbari, rahimahullah ta'ala, waqal ajtama'at al ulama min ahl al fiqhi, wal ilmi, wal nasak, wal nasaki, wal ibadi, wal zuhadi, min awwal hadi hil umma. إلا وقتنا هذا أن صلاة الجمعة وعيدين ومنا وعرفات وعرفات والغزوة والحج والهدى أو هدي مع كل أمير بير أو فاجر. so إمام ابن بطة الأكبر رحمه الله تعالى he said in his book الشرح والإبانة he said that the ulama, the scholars from Ahl fiqh from the people of fiqh and jurisprudence, will ilm, meaning knowledge, will nasik, will ibad, will ubad, will zuhad, those people of taqwa and ibadah and asceticism, from the beginning of this ummah up to until the time up until this day. Have this have this principle. They have ijtima. They have uh, ijma on this this masala. 
that prayer, the Salat uh, Ajumwa, and the Eidain, and Mina, and Arafat, uh, and Arafah, and uh, making Ghazwa or Jihad, and Hajj, and the Hadi, all are with the righteous leader and the wicked leader. So again, how many uh, imma to the, uh, of the Salaf, and I have so many, the statement of Imam Abu Uthman al-Sabuni, the statement of Imam al-Tahawi, statements, kathra to ruwa, uh, uh, um, narrations from Imam al al uh, and Sunnah al-Khalal, and many of the Imams of Sunnah, wa Imam Babahari, wa Kathir, wa Abi Hassan al-Ash'ari, and all these, and Ajuri, and all these Imams of the Sunnah, the, the, the early books of Ittiqad, they have Ittifaq, they have consensus. Do not try to rebel against the leader. Those are some of the statements of the Imams of Huda. And there's so many ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I want to quickly, as quick as I can, to not bore you, speak about the ru ruling about uh, according to human law as opposed to divine law. Because this is the shubah that Ahla Takfir, Ahla Tafjir, Ahla Tafsiq, Ahla Tabdi' that they take this path, that they believe in making, they say, okay, fine, we can go with those statements, but hey, We've already declared takfir on all the leaders because this one is not ruling, but this one has some democracy in his system. This one has some uh, communism in his system. This one is this, this one is this. First, we have to establish a principle that Ahl Sunnah, uh, the, the ulama, explained for us that plain and simple, Ahl Sunnah, and this is from the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we do not defend anyone in their mistakes. We do not defend anyone in their sin. We do not defend anyone in kufr. We do not defend anyone in their deviance or misguidance or bid'ah. That's a qa'idah in Islam. That's a principle in Islam. So, when we have various leaders doing different things, some ruling by some of the Sharia, some ruling by none of the Sharia, every leader has a different status. And that status is in accordance with the judgments of Kitab Allah, Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Wa Fahm Salaf Asari, and the Salaf Asari, Radiallahu Ta'ala Majma'in. And it is for who? It is for the scholars to look at those things and determine when someone is outside the fold of Islam and someone is still remaining as a Muslim, however they're in disobedience. One of the major sins which can sometimes take one out of the fold of Islam is ruling by other than divine law. And this is something, the scholars from the times of the companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, up until now, have dealt with this issue. And, and, and distinguish when uh, reg regarding leadership when they have left the fold of Islam by ruling by human laws for example the ones who rule by democracy and so forth and when they are still uh, within the fold of Islam uh, regardless of the system that they are ruling by but what is the thing that takes them out of the fold of Islam? All of that is major sins. Let's let's establish that first. The ulama, they all they have ittifaq. They are in agreements that uh, the ruling by human laws is a major sin, and the and sometimes it is the major disbelief. Sometimes it is the minor disbelief, and this can be summed up in the statement of Ibn Abbas when he was uh, when he explained the the uh, the ayat whoever does not uh, judge by what Allah has revealed ulaika humul kafirun that they are disbelievers uh, Ibn Abbas rahimahullah ta'ala he said kufr dun kufr he said that this is the disbelief this is the lesser disbelief Meaning that letting us know, and as we've established in many of our lessons, and go back to our lessons in Nawakat al-Islam, that all of these categories, whether it be fisk, whether it be vum, whether it be shirk, whether it be kufr, they have different categories. Meaning that they have different levels, that there's the major uh, kufr, the minor kufr, the major sin, the minor sin, the major shirk, the minor shirk. There are all of these, uh, the major dhulm and the minor dhulm. And where does this categories come up from? It comes from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by following up the nusus, 
the ulama from the early scholars up until now were able to deduce that these uh, that there are two levels of kufr. There are two di- types of kufr. There's the major that takes you out of the fold of Islam, and there's the minor kufr, which means the person remains a Muslim. Moving on to this is that some of the uh, statements. Here's a statement of uh, Al Utaybi. He mentioned. The issue of ruling by human law as opposed to divine law is not restricted to judges, leaders, and princes. So this is very imperative for us and very important. But rather it includes anyone who judges between two parties, like a teacher and his students, a father and his children, etc. The biggest area of contingent between the Khwarij belief and the orthodox belief, meaning Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is the condition of the ruler. And when he is considered to be out of the fold of Islam because of his ruling by other than the Sharia. So these are complex issues. These are not issues we can just throw around this and throw around that. That's why it's taken us some time to get through these, because these are major Masail that I don't even like to talk about. But since it's so much Shubahat and some of our brothers are suffering because they, they have to deal with people in their communities who are attacking them, for being from Ahlul Sunnah and attacking them from not following their methodology, which means to make hijra to, to non-Muslim lands and then make takfir of the Muslim leaders and be on the welfare system of the non-Muslims. This is the methodology of these modern day takfiris, many of them, not all of them, but many of them. We know them personally and we know some of their imams, Abu Qatada, uh, uh, Abu Hamza. It's well known the state and status of these people and how they lived in the UK and why they were busy making takfir of the the ulama and the the uh, the leaders of Ahl Sun uh, the 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 imams of the ummah. So as it is already mentioned, the orthodox scholars agree that not judging by the laws laws is a major sin. However, there are important details they highlight regarding when the ruler is considered to be outside of the fold of Islam. Ibn Abbas and Tawu said, this is not the disbelief that constitutes infidelity. Instead, if he rules by other than uh, divine law, then he has committed an act of disbelief, and this is not like the one who disbelieves in the last day. Isn't that sufficient for you? Isn't that statement alone you can find in Tafsir al-Baghawi? That isn't that enough that Imam Ibn Abbas, the one who made ta'wil al-Qur'an, the Prophet sallallahu made dua for him. Isn't that sufficient? Isn't that sufficient? The narrations on Ibn Abbas and uh, Tawus, the tabi'in, and those many tabi'in who, who, who mentioned about this issue that, yes, the leaders can be outside the fold of Islam and they can be in the fold of Islam. And that is imperative that we don't busy ourselves with these issues and that we don't debate and argue about these issues, but instead we should look into them for in, in as far as it is beneficial for us. This statement forms the foundation of the orthodox position as it is from some of the early scholars who explain the Quran. It should be noted that it appears they distinguish between major and minor disbelief, as I mentioned uh, in the above statement. Another classical scholar, uh, Atta, said, he's another tabi'i, or itba'a tabi'i, uh, it is disbelief like uh, less than disbelief and tyranny less than tyranny and wickedness less than wickedness. What do we see from this? When this is also in Tafsir al-Baghawi, we see that the early scholars, the classical scholars, the Salaf al-Saleh, that they made a distinction. They made categories uh, from going from the Nasuls and of course the Sahaba, they had the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there, Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi, to know that there's a kufr dun a kufr, that there's uh, two types of kufr, there's the major and the minor, there's the major shirk and the minor, there's the major uh, disbelief and the minor disbelief, there's the major uh, hypocrisy and the minor hypocrisy, etc. So here, a d- definite distinction is made between the two types of disbelief regarding ruling by other than the Sharia. Ikrama, another tabi'in, uh, another tabi'i, noted for, uh, known for his Quranic explanation, mentioned the meaning of this verse is whoever does not rule by divine law while rejecting it has disbelief, and whoever agrees with it but does not rule by, uh, but does not rule by it, then he is an oppressive sinner. Ibn al Jozi said. Rahimullah Ta'ala, and the decisive speech in this regard is that whoever does not judge by what Allah revealed while rejecting it in belief 
and he knows that it is Allah who revealed it, as the Jews did, then he is a disbeliever. And whoever does not judge by what Allah revealed, that includes some democracy, but that includes the communism, uh, inclining to his desires without rejecting it. We're talking about the one that doesn't reject the Sharia in his aqidah, in his creed, then he is an oppressive and wicked sinner. This is the statement of Ibn Josie. Isn't that sufficient for you? Ibn al-Qayyum said, a student of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, also believed that the ruler's condition should be evalu evaluated before passing a judgment of takfir upon him. He said regarding the ruler, if he believes in the obligation of judging by what Allah has revealed in this situation, but then turned away from it out of disobedience, and while acknowledging that he is deserving of punishment, then this is kufr al-askar. This is Imam ibn al-Qayyim. He said it's kufr al-askar. And he believes that it is not obligatory and that he has a choice in the matter along with his firm belief that it is the judgment of Allah, then this is kufr al-akbar. This one has disbelieved. The one has disbelieved what? Is he believes that it is not a, an obligation to rule by the Sharia. And that he believes that he has a choice in the matter. I can rule by democracy or the Sharia. Whichever one I choose. Then this person, a, 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 with his firm belief that it is the judgment of Allah, being, believing that democracy or whatever is the rule of Allah, then this is kufr al-akbar that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. And if he was ignorant in the matter, this is a statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, in the matter, or made an error, then he is the one who errs. Meaning he's the one, he's mistaken, and his ruling is the same for those who err, meaning he's not a disbeliever. So this shows us what? This shows us how the classical scholars from the Salaf up until the later generations, that they didn't uh, just declare a leader for, for his lack of ruling by the Sharia, or his total uh, is not ruling by the, the Sharia in any aspects. They didn't just declare it wasn't a black and white issue, that there's much details for this. And in order to make those judgments, you need these details. So we'll mention a couple of other statements and then we'll end it there because uh, these are very complex issues and we hope that this sheds some light uh, on the importance of avoiding these issues and some clarity on these issues, that that these issues are not black and white, that it is not for us to take the, the book and believe that we can make these judgments upon leaders. There are some leaders that have left the fold of Islam. No one has qualms about someone who is Hizbabath. You know, the case of Saddam Hussein, and we don't know how he died, because he said his Shahada, maybe he made Tawbah from his principles. But we know during his life, the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, many of them made takfir of him. We know the ulama make takfir of uh, Bashar in Syria, the one who is uh, uh, an Alawi, Shia Rafidi, you know, is, is related to them in in creed and even a shed in kufr than that. We know these people are outside the fold of Islam. But is it for us to get on the minbar and busy ourselves with these things and call the people to rebellion? Another important aspect, I think I'll, I'll skip reading more statements, those are sufficient. Another important aspect is knowing that even if a Muslim, as Shaykh Al Imam bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned with details in one of his treatises about when the leader, about rebellion against the leader, that even if a leader is declared a, a disbeliever, even if the ulama have declared him a disbeliever, that it is not, that does not mean you make khuruj on the, on the leader. That does not make it permissible for you just to run, there are conditions for that. And the Imam clarified that that one of the important things, which is a, 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 a condition for all of our ibadah, is qudra, is the qudra, is that you have the ability to do so. Without and there and it and it mabni ala masla wa mafsara and it also built upon the harms and the benefits. For example, look at Syria right now. We have a leader that is evil. Not just evil, but he's, he's a, a, a kafir, shaitan, his babath. And those different groups have rebelled against. We don't know who's really behind it, but it's such a complex uh, rebellion and, and difficult situation. The, only, the people are just suffering. So they're rebelling, and it just means more bloodshed, more instability. Do they have the qudra? No, they don't have the ability. So, Is there maslaha in that? We don't see much maslaha because we see the women and children being killed daily. So this lets us know there's no benefit in that. Iraq, 
another situation a fold as as an imam uh, in the in the haram imam uh, uh, Abdul Musan al Abad al Muhaddith Hafizullah Taala he mentioned when he was asked about Iraq he said. He said, no, it's not jihad. He said, have a folder. He said, it's folder. He said, it's chaos. So it lets us know one thing, that if we go back to the usul of Islam, we'll see that our ibadah requires qudra. Look at the salat even. Just in case you, you it, 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 the shaitan has whispered to you and say, hey, this guy's coming up with new principles. This is bid'ah. No. Look at the usul of Islam. Look at what the ulama of Islam, the usuliyun. Look at what uh, Ahl Sunnah, the quiet and principles of Ahl Sunnah, and you'll find that what I'm saying is from those principles. Is what the imams have said before us and the imams of today say that you must have qudra for salat. If you're unable to to pray standing, what? You pray sitting. If you're unable to pray sitting, what? You pray on your, your side. If you're unable to pray on your side, you pray on your back. If you're unable, etc. If you're unable to pray uh, with your uh, any of your body, for example, your, your body is paralyzed you with your eyes. And if you're unable to make any ishara with your eyes or anything else, uh, then... If you are out of, the, you know, you're in a coma or something, of course, the prayer is not upon you. So it lets us know that what qudra is a, um, is a, 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 a soul of ibadah. It is something, it's a principle, it is a shurut that you have, that must be in place in order to do worship. And that is the same thing with rebellion in all aspects of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Attaqullah mastata'atum. Fear Allah as much as you can. As much as you're able to. So, for example, if you... There's so many examples in the Sharia. So many examples. Especially regarding Salat and, and, and many, many aspects of Ibadah. Hajj. If you're unable to, you don't have the wealth. Then that wajib is not... It's not wajib upon you. If you don't have the means to make the Hajj. If it is not an obligation upon you. To do many things if you don't, of course, uh, uh, if you don't have the ability to do so. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And bless us to be a source of light and guidance for others. And may Allah guide us for any of our mistakes and forgive us of our sins. We're going to end with this last uh, quote of Sheikh uh, Imam Fozan. Hafidhullah Ta'ala who said, So apostasy is not pronounced on everyone who rules by other than what Allah has revealed. Instead, there are details in this matter between whoever sees that ruling by other than Allah, Allah's laws is better or the same as any other law. Or that there is a choice between ruling by Islamic law or not. Then this one is judged as a disbeliever outside of the fold of Islam. Uh, Bin Baz said, the former Mufti, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mention a lot of tafsil about this issue. He said, likewise, the one who believes it is permissible to rule by another law apart from Islamic law is also a disbeliever, if any, even if he believes Islamic law is better. However, Bin Baz held that the one who rules from his desires or out of fear, making judgments to please others based on bribery or for some other reason, is a major sinner still in the fold of Islam. So that's imperative for us to know. That's imperative for us to take as our in our religion because this is the Faham al-Salaf al-Saleh radiallahu ta'ala anhum this is what Muhammad ibn Abdullah preached go to Sahih Muslim I encourage you if you have doubt about this issue please read the whole chapter of Sahih Muslim if you have the Arabic if you have the ability and you know the Arabic language please go to it in Arabic and look at the explanation of Imam Nawawi and you will find so many benefits to strengthen your heart in this and to rest assured about this and to know that it's not for you to busy yourself with this and to know that this issue is com complex and to know that Sometimes the rulers can be a disbeliever. Sometimes they're in the fold of Islam as a major sinner. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.